topic of the show. Do, 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 do. It is time for our Starfield Ultimate Review. So finally, a review. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about our, our likes, dislikes, and we're going to give it our 10 point. We have, we're going to use our traditional Xbox the Box 10 point scale where we do not have half numbers. We only have full numbers. But because there's two of us, they ca- we can still get half numbers in the end because if I say one and you say five, it'd be a three. Or you know what I mean? Like, like we, we take the aggregate between both of us and that's our score. So there you go. Mind that's you, how it works. Well, mind you, we're already like one hour into this whole thing and I didn't realize news takes up so much time. But we can finally Sorry. dedicate a huge <laughs> section of the podcast to review the entire game because for us... Uh, both of us has been like, uh, like we already spent about over a hundred hours in this game where we beaten the main oh, yeah. story. We did one or two faction quest lines. Like for me, for instance, mm-hmm. I did a three star collective, uh, quest line. And we also been doing yeah. side missions. I did a lot of cargo works and even did a few other things like shipbuilding. So we sh- I think- we should be able to give it a nice four review of this whole game as Xbox I fans, think, yeah. as huge players as well, because other people have said they have spent hours on it, but they just did nitpicking and said what they like about it. Also, we and you, we kind of did different things. We went different ways in our game, for sure. I did the Crimson Fleet. You did the Freestar Collective. You did base building. I did the main plot more and like stuff like that. We basically both went different routes. We did different things. So I think we, together, we literally cover the entire game pretty much. <laughs> we both did lots of different things and we both like got different things out of it. We both enjoyed it for different reasons. So I think that's pretty cool that we basically we're both very different when it comes to our reviews, I think, which would be interesting to hear what you think about certain things. So uh, should we start off with what did we like about the game? Uh, so you've, you've would you like to... This. I haven't, so let you go first. I actually like... Well, I suppose, yeah, I think I would go first. So okay, Starfield, at the moment, is a Bethesda game that pretty much like takes you to space and it has, well, I mean, you could say this is unique for having a sci-fi theme and involves space exploration. And I think it's more of a Frankenstein of the kinds of things like elites, planet exploration, armor cores, uh, shipbuilding mechanics. And there's even lots of board features from like Fallout 4 and Skyrim, which puts them all together into this like one huge game. And it was supposed to be Bethesda's like biggest achievement and so far there's some parts of it that actually like works like you still get the usual side quests you get to interact with people and you also get to visit cities but as but you also have like plenty of extra land because you get to explore 120 star systems each with so many different planets with different resources so how X is just go into like you can there's some like landmarks which you can visit and you can like get to explore facilities. But if, but the cool thing is that you can put a landing pad anywhere, anywhere where you can most likely find the particular kind of resource and go in the biome and you just fall in mm-hmm. and you collect the resources. And the only difference is, is like how randomly it generates with structures, caves, everything. So it's just like, yeah. The Skyrim map, even though you have more random things in it. So I think it's just like adds to this whole fun of exploration and being able to explore structures. Also, I think they seem to offer uh, quite a bunch for the whole game. And I think that's really cool. Like shipbuilding, I enjoy it. It's like to t- attach parts and you have a lot of customization. And I do enjoy like lots of really interesting parts with it. So I built like about a few of the ships and this just allows for creativity. The only issues I have is that building ships is expensive. Like Professor did say mm-hmm. that shipbuilding is a late game uh, content. And I think it just proves that you need loads of funds in order to get the best ship built, but you can still like have best weapons for less and still destroy ships in space. But I think it's just like, 
uh, it's pretty cool. You can like get loads of money and you can get the best ships. But there's also problems that you can control like how you just open up doors on the uh, habs. Because if you put the habs together, sometimes mm. you get doors yep. in unexpected places, which means if you put like three habs together and you're hoping the front doors will be like pointed to each other, one of them has the back doors pointing to one of the hubs and it just ends up turning into the maze. And this is yeah, a bit annoying. of a mathematical understanding on how you can do this, which I ended up like adding the, I think the hallways from the Hope Tech shop, which I added to some of the parts of the ship. So it's easier to get to the wings instead of like having to go around the back and access the hubs on one of the sides of my ship. So yeah. I think that's just a bit annoying. Also, I found the combat to be like really interesting. Like I can shoot. Yeah. It's it's just a refined gameplay and feels better than Fallout. And it even comes with like boost packs, lots of looting, and it's really fun to like get rid of enemies. Plus, you, the up to upgrades for it is just what really expands the enjoyment of the game. Also, while it's a bit confusing at first, but I found the dog fighting in space to be great, where once you get the best weapons, you can like get rid of it, ships really easily, and it just seems as if you have a white control, just as long as you have the white perks for it. But yeah, story, it's it's a bit Iminami, but I think it does have an interest in the, in the main story, and I think there's some like really interesting missions, and there's some story, and I thought some of the characters are like really good. So I just mm -hmm. think it's just really good. Also, it's just so addictive that I played into the morning, like five o'clock the morning. And it's rare for any game for me to, to put me into this state. So do you have anything to add yeah. with these? So we all, there's lots to add with that. So that's interesting you were saying all that. So, okay, let me get, let me get this. Uh, okay. So I've literally just made my spaceship called the the Meatball Seb, which I sent you a picture of. It looks like a giant Meatball Seb. It's like giant, and it's like <laughs> three stories high with multiple herbs. And it's literally like a maze trying to get through it, trying to get to the cockpit. It is annoying. The, the layout thing is annoying. But I do love shipbuilding. Shipbuilding is so much fun. I absolutely adore. Just, I can spend hours just building ships. I really can. Uh, but yeah, it's like, so... There's so much to you just covered. So, okay, let me just get, let me just go through it. So, I love the story. I love the setting. I love the world. I think all of it is great. I love the NASA punk art style. I like the lore and the, and the world and the settings. I like the companions. I think Sarah's great. I think Anais is great. People, I hear people slagging off Barrett. I really like Barrett. I think Barrett's great. I, agree. And I think Sam Co was great. I mean, Sam. Samco was getting on my nerves because he kept repeating dialogue, but apart from that, he was a great companion still. I think I really like Samco. Um, so I like the characters. I like the world. I think the storyline was really good. I thought there was like some nice twists in the plot and stuff, and I thought it was a really good story. Um, and this is like the first Bethesda game I've ever finished, and that's probably maybe why. I mean, like, I was going to say this in my review as well, is that... I go, oh, I love the Crimson Fleet, and people will go, oh, have you played the Dark Brotherhood in the Oblivion? I'm like, no, I haven't. But for me, this is my Dark Brotherhood. This is my, this is my, like, this is the one I'm going to relate to going forward. It's like, so I guess if it's derivative to some people or repetitive to some people, it's not to me because this is my first Bethesda game that I really got into. Uh, I've always played Skyrim and stuff, but I've never got this far into it. Uh, this is my favorite Bethesda game. I adore it. I can't stop playing it. I, and there's not really. I have issues with it. And we'll talk. Uh, do, I mean, do you want me to tell you what issues I got as well, or do we? Yeah, or do you just, that's right. at least to what we dislike about the game. And I think yeah. because you have a lot of positive uh, comments about it, I think it's worth that you yeah. say about. Not only the issues, but what you don't like about Starfield. And I'm very curious to yeah. know what you say about it. I mean, I really like this game. So I, I, it, is, it is hard for me to say bad things, but there is bad things. I mean, the, the biggest issue is overcumbent. Oh, being overcumbent, overcumbered, whatever it's called. That is such a pain in the ass. And it's still annoying even to the end of the game now. I'm just like, why is this a thing? 
is so annoying. I've got max. I've maxed out the level of like carrying items. I always have a companion with me, and they all. I always end up putting all my stuff on my companion. <laughs> like, yeah, you carry this shit. You take all my crap. I don't want it. And then I'll just put it on my ship, and then it's like I made the ship have like when I made the Nakamura ship. I would have as much storage, cargo storage as I possibly can, and I would still run out of cargo storage. I'm like, ah, why? It's so annoying. I hate it. Like, you can have infinite, they have an infinite bloody vault in your house, and you have an infinite vault downstairs in the basement of the lodge. Why can't you have that on your ship or on your person? I don't understand. It's so annoying. That's my biggest complaint of the whole game is literally the inventory system is so bloody annoying. <laughs> because especially like i want to do base building but i'm like but then i'm gonna have like another hundred iron and i'm gonna have to find somewhere to put it all and i'm like i can't be bothered it's too much effort to get all like i like like i was like the event, like with new game plus i'm like you know what i'm gonna do new game plus and then i don't have to worry about any of these bases i said mm-hmm. before i'll just get rid of them just they'll be gone and i don't have to think <laughs> about them ever again that is like literally is that is the biggest complaint is the is the is the uh, overcumbent the uh, the storage I think that stuff is really really annoying and you need to fix that. Um, what else do I not like? Well, I think that's like uh, the main thing. I may I may have to add that. What if you get yeah, to? Sorry to be rude, but what no. if I told you that uh, in Fallout Four you should be able to have an unlimited storage in any outpost? What would you say about that? Well, yeah. I mean, is that is that true? Is that in Fallout Four? I'll go look that up for you because I don't want to say. <laughs> if this that's the any... case, if that is the case, then yeah. Like, why isn't that on a thing in Starfield? Like, why can't I have that? Yeah, like the safe I have in my house. Why can't I have like one of those in every one of my outposts? And would it be just be so much more convenient? And it's just like yeah, like you know, I want to build stuff with materials, but I'm like, oh, where did I leave it? Which box did I leave it in? Did I leave it on this planet? like six solar systems away. I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered to go all that way to get my iron. I'll just buy some more iron. Like that kind of stuff <laughs> annoys me. <laughs> um, that That's my main, my main complaint. Uh, obviously, it can be a little buggy at times, but I'm not like not that bad when it comes to bugs. I've seen a lot worse. Um, well, I think it's it a bit... Being... Sorry, I just looked it up on. and I... I think whenever I looked for Fallout 4, it just comes up with Starfield. I'm like, oh, come on, oh. Google. <laughs> but then, so yeah, it's just here. One of the people did say, and that's a different post, mind you, when I found it out for another Reddit post. It says here, in Fallout 4, your settlement workbench has unlimited storage because that's what you build from. In Starfield, there's two unlimited storage chests in a lodge. So cl- Professor clearly knows players need this. So it does seem as if the, I think the Fallout 4 uses settlements. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. It's just a, yeah. Yeah. Why just in the lodge? That's the annoying thing. Uh, Also would be a good thing is that if you could like favorite like locations you've been to or something. Like, so basically there's like, there's this mission where this guy is uh, trying to save a tree. Uh, you've be, you've done that mission. Yes. I haven't done that mission. That's a New Atlantis. I keep that mission just so I can go back to New Atlantis and fast travel back to New Atlantis without having to go through all the maps. I literally keep that activity just so I could do that. Like it'd be nice if you could just have like, oh, favorite locations: New Atlantis, uh, Mars, Neon, blah blah blah. It's like otherwise, basically, otherwise, I'm just gonna have to Google it or just keep <laughs> a mission to do. Just keep a mission that I know I'm never going to complete just so I can fast travel to that location just so it's on my mission list. Like, that's literally what I do. That is another annoying thing. So, like, yeah, those are my two main annoyances. Uh, apart from that, I really like the game. I think it's really cool. Uh, I think there's not enough to do in space as well. Like, when you're in your spaceship, there's dogfighting and there's, like, you can destroy asteroids and there's a couple of, like, derelict ships and stuff, but... It'd be nice if you could just explore space and just like just go off on like an adventure and say, "Oh, I'm gonna go to that planet over there and just fly over there and see if I came across anything on the way." It's like it feels like each area is like blocked off. Like here's a chunk. This is your space for this area, and then you can fast travel to other places. I think that would be nicer if they had a bit more to do in space. But those are my main complaints. Apart from that, love the game. Uh, it's not perfect, but no game is. 
And uh, yeah, hopefully these are things they can fix with patches and DLC. Fingers crossed. Well, I have a bunch to say about this game. What are the yeah, go ahead. issues with it? And there's quite a list. But first of all... Oh, God. <laughs> it's interesting you like brought up encumbrance. And I just feel it's not that much of a big deal. It's just annoying because, like, at the beginning, like, you can just carry as much stuff as you can. So you literally use yourself has an infinite storage. It's just, like, the more items yeah. you have, the faster you lose all that oxygen and then a lot ruining your health. But it doesn't kill you. It just keeps you at about 10 That's or 5%. True. So you can carry it's just annoying. You can carry all the stuff in from the bow posts, put into your pockets, and you can still go anywhere. The only thing is that if you're encumbered, you can't tra travel to anywhere. Travel. So therefore... Exactly. That's what I was going to say. So therefore, That's I think the I issue. did encounter the blood, uh, a bug, and I think it's one of the, the, to do with one of the outposts. I have, like, ship bugs, and I think there's even one when there's an issue that didn't update the ship, and then it did duplicate the ship twice in the same location. It's just like... Oh, okay, I'll just like, pop in there and see if it updates. And then game froze once I get into there because oh. there's two ships in there. And it's like, uh-oh. But the point That's is, good. whenever my ship like gets invisible after I went through a buggy outpost and all I have to do is land on it and not outside, outside the f gets around this issue. But what it sometimes do is that when I fly to other places there, it makes my ship invisible. And it's a problem. Like, you can't... Fast travel to it if you're encumbered. You had to drop all the stuff off, fast travel into it. And yeah, it's just like clips through the surface. But the point is that it you can't always go anywhere with all these items. You can't fast travel anywhere. So you had to climb, walk all the way back to the ship or anywhere so you can offload all this stuff. Also, I definitely agree with like you keep running out of stuff and you'll often have to go back to the lodge every time to not only put a lot of the stuff into the chest in your bedroom, but also the chest that's in the research lab. Yeah. And that's cool. But it's also annoying that it doesn't connect to your ship. You have to carry it in your inventory all the time, and then you just offload it in the storage there. Also, when you begin the game, which I did notice is a huge issue, is that you start with 135 uh, st like storage there on yourself, and you don't easily upgrade it without any like mods or any well the suit mods or anything like that so mm -hmm. you always have like really small space plus the perky like you were saying about which is weightlifting one it only yeah. adds the to the limit instead of multiplies it unlike the payloads which yeah. multiplies your cargo on the ship so i just feel like you just always end up <laughs> like you just have to drop a bunch of stuff either inside the ship or the outpost and it's still there when you visit it which leads to the funny uh sucking its joke in one of the funny videos on youtube yes yes yeah but yes the, uh, i'll have to share that video with people yeah so like this they just filled their ship with plants which is really random um i was gonna mention i was gonna say it's like it's funny to me that when Bethesda were like asked before, it's like, do you think you should have fuel like consumption or whatever? Like you have to refuel your ship or whatever. And they go, no, that's that's like that wouldn't be fun, and that would just take away from the game. So, like, well, having limited cargo is not fun, and it takes away from the game. Just give us a limited cargo on our ships. I don't understand. <laughs> like if you like, you don't have to worry about fuel limits or anything like that. Like just. You could have like a survival mode where you have all these limitations, but like I think the default shouldn't have it. I mean, it, it annoys me. It annoys me so much. <laughs> yes, but oh I think God. it just Sorry. gets to the I point could... where you have enough ship fuel tanks, you get enough perks, and you've got a mo most powerful enough ship that you can literally get from left to right in just one go, provided you explore yeah. all the plants in between, and yet. The cargo, like, I think the Bethesda may have been a bit too strict with it, and that's the problem. Yes, it is annoying. There's one with me we can all... Annoyed. Sorry, there's one with we can all agree, and you didn't mention this, is that you heard about the star powers, the, like, dragon shouts in Skyrim? 
Yeah, I mean that's kind of spoilers a little bit, but yes, yeah. I mean, if they're in, it's in the it's in the direct, so everyone knows about. Surely you know about the star powers by now. If you don't know, sorry, uh, but go ahead. Yeah, star powers. Well, star powers. Well, that's one of the. It's just more of a gimmick in the game. Is that for the story? Yeah. You just encounter the special powers that you can unlock, and it just works like a dragon shell that if you press like both. Uh, the shoulder buttons you can like activate a shout and it does like some interesting things like you can get more yeah. oxygen in the air you can blow enemies out and it does all those cool cool things but it just gets so tacked on in the game and not part of the actual gameplay that you just feel like it's not integral to the whole no. game and you just feel like it's no point even the loop where you can explore the planets and find those powers but you have to go to the certain person every time you want to find the power. So you meet that specific yeah. person, find a power on the selected planet, come back, get another mission, collect another power, and it just kind of defeats the purpose of like exploring the stars because you it just can, end it can up... It a bit tedious, yeah. Yeah. And I just feel like <sighs> the powers is just a extra reliability. And you just feel like there's no point getting those powers. It's just like almost for bragging rights even though in the new game plus yeah. you can actually stack those powers up and get better effects with it but apart from that yeah. it's just like you just feel it's just no point on doing it yeah i mean uh, yeah so i was the only power i i mean again spoilers there's only minor spoilers so if it's i'm sorry if i ever ruined it for people but That's right. the only power i use the only one i use is uh like the one that makes me just move faster, like zip forward, like grab jump or something, and just yes. RBLB, and I just go boop, boop. And that's just literally so I could just travel quicker. Like my guy keeps going, <laughs> I'm out of breath, I'm dying. I'm sorry, so when he's going, I'm dying, now I'll just go pew, 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 like te- teleport forward. And like literally, it's just about moving quicker. That's literally the only thing I use. I don't use any other powers, like ever. I don't see the point. Because you know, I already feel OP with my guns. I like can kill, like, uh, like wipe out a whole thing with the, like, I mean, that might be a thing I might complain about. The game, the shooting, ga- the shooting gameplay is really fun, but it's super easy. Like I've never, I don't think I've ever died in a gunfight in this game. The gunfighting is so easy. Like the NPCs are a bit thick. Like the, the space battles can be really hard. It's just like, <laughs> so I yeah, don't know. I think that's uh, a problem because I don't seem to have a huge issue with the AI, but I do have a huge. Yeah. I think I notice more like how easy it is to get rid of enemies and you feel like you want to crank it up to very hard, which it gets very hard, but then yeah. you, there's no penalty if you like turn it down to easy or very easy and that's the same problem. It's starting yeah. from like oblivion because if you turn it down to the lower difficulty, you just kill the enemy and you have no consequence. The only thing it yeah. does in the Starfield is just like increases the chance of having legendary e- enemies for, like, legendary loots. But you just feel like you just want to lower down the difficulty. Either way, like, it seems most of the enemies that count the game are, like, level 100. So, provided if you have a powerful weapon, like a powerful shotgun that fires explosive rounds, you can definitely, like, yeah. sweep these enemies away. And it's just like, shh, like that. Pretty sweet, pretty straightforward. Uh... Oh, also going to mention that was a, I had another negative I just thought of. Um, well, maybe it's not a negative view because you've already done it all already, but there's a lot of farmy uh, achievements. And the achievement list itself isn't too bad. There's some achievements in the, like There's some games where you get achievements which are literally impossible, like complete new game plus 200 times and reach level 5,000 or whatever. But. But like, but the achievements are pretty achievable, but there are some bad ones like getting 500 um, biological samples or whatever. I know what you all. mean. Like, in Garnet, Gone- there's some grindy achievements yeah, in this game, which is a bit annoying. You can get, like, if you mine the materials, where oh gosh, that may be a bit sneezy, but sorry, but yeah, no, that's all right. No need to apologize, but I know what you mean there's inorganic resources which you basically like mine the stones you don't mm-hmm. do this on like outpost farming but you if you just mine the stones you find them on planets you get 
uh, resources there, which contributes towards 500. Sometimes you get two, sometimes you get one. But there's also the organic resources. And this one's a that hasn't been programmed properly, as I said earlier in the no. podcast, is that you have to interact with 500 plants instead of actually get, getting resources from them or even from the animals. You just have to interact with 500 plants. But there's even yeah, like sort of one way. achievement where you had to land on 100 planets. And it's a bit like risky because if you land on so many planets, you have so much information to put in a save, which slows down saving. Also, yeah. you've... You have mm. to visit 120 systems, and some of the planet, some of the systems are like overlapping with others because they're so close to each other, and it just makes it very difficult to track. Like once I'm down to like one or two planets before I unlock achievement, I literally have to go through each and every star to see if any one of them got scanned in the shows that I've visited the yeah. planet, and I just feel like it's. It just tries to push for things like it's achievements well, in themselves, but it just gets really like tedious or dull or some sort. With that one, you you do know the uh, the stars that are brighter you've been to, and if the stars yes. are dimmer, you haven't been there. And the red, if you haven't, if I mean the red, if you can't reach them, I don't know why they're red. I haven't figured that one out yet. But yeah, you you can tell which ones you haven't been to, but it's difficult sometimes because of the brightness. It's not that. It's a quite yeah. subtle. I had this thing, problem so, too, yeah. of course. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's just like, yeah, I think it's just a bit nuisance there. Now I just had to go through the long list of what I dislike about the game, and I think we're already going <laughs> yeah. through like a bunch there. So, uh, sorry, this might be a good yeah. break for you to like settle down and settle your throat because I'm gonna go through a whole lot of it. So, the outposts. Uh, as I was saying about the powers, the outposts are supposed to be like really cool. Like you can build the outposts on any planet, and you can like farm resources from the ground, and you can get some like extra bits so you can use for crafting. But honestly, like it's just like outposts doesn't have as much of a purpose. Like you can build farms for like plants and animals, and you can farm them, but it just feels like you can get much of the resources on shops and you can use it to create new meds and new weapons, uh, mods for your weapons and as well as your spacesuit. And you can only get those resources from the shop. So it kind of like diminishes the point of like outposts. Also the outposts are like a downgrade from the outposts you build. And I think it's actually the settlements or some sort from Fallout 4. So it's just like, it just being watered down, then you can like only build them for like ha building homes out of them for role play. But people have been using them to do farms with it, and I think it's when the game goes into bottlenecks because it it uses the output links that if you have a refinery, you can link it up to a storage box so it can store more resources, and then you can transfer yeah. them into transfer containers. So that way, it just makes it easier for you to deal with them. Output links is just a bit tedious because it treats that storage container as a separate thing, which means you stack them up, but you have to do the tedious thing you do the output link to get the snake ray to towards all of them. And it's not very intuitive. I even like thought I put the output links from the refinery to each and every box, but it's more efficient to link them all up. But it causes them right. to have them all managed at once and not treat them as a single object, which is why that because it has to deal with every box, having too many of those storage boxes will slow the game down. And that's the cost mm. of like, if you're doing this XP farm where you craft and you're also like do several things to like, you can mass produce those objects for XP. You, yeah. there's a, there's a caveat to it where having too much of that stuff to store those resources can slow the game down and it's not that great. Also, I found more bugs with outposts as well as like uh, performance issues with them than any other game. And it's almost makes me feel like, I just feel like there's no point going to the outposts. Like you can, like even if you're not trying to overcomplicate these ones, 
You can have many Alpes, but it still gives the game more time to manage them all. Also, I found the problem that if you put too many cargo links, it will make your game stutter because instead of doing some simple calculations, it tries to run that white in the background, which is why when I put three outposts, uh, three cargo links that are into the system, it slows the game down like every 30 seconds and it's just a bit of a nuisance, which is why it's better if you're yeah. not using them to farm resources, you can disable the links and just leave them alone. But either way, it's not optimized. It's a bit buggy because sometimes I have to reload the save to access the workbench. And also I ran into the issue with the ship builder where one outpost, it doesn't always redirect the ship there because it's too close to the landing bay. And one time, yeah. like I put one of the ship builders and I did a mistake and it causes like, if like most of the time you land your ship there, when you go out of it, it either like attaches some of the ship bits over it, or you just make your ship invisible, which just leads to this one serious bug that if you fast travel to the invisible ship and like, oh, yeah. it's stuck underneath the ground, but if you exit a ship, you just slip through into the void and it will be known as outpost template. And it's just like, yep, it's just feels a bit game breaking on this you have some way to fast travel. But thankfully, you you can't be overcumbered with that. So it's just like, you can just fast travel out of it. So it's just easy enough. I have a question. Well, I, uh, yeah, I have a question for you. So um, when it comes to farming and building up all these outposts and stuff, would you recommend people do this after they complete the main story or maybe do it before or just do the main story, do the outpost, and then do a new game plus and do everything else? Like, because you think this like this might cause like game breaking glitches and stuff. Do you think this might be something worth doing? Maybe on a different save file or on a like all as I said, or just do a new or do getting all the farming done, get all the achievements, and then do a new game plus run. I, all the I know what you mean, and I feel these scenarios are separate because it doesn't mm -hmm. like cause them to like so down, but. It just really depends because if you've landed in too many planets with more landing pads, could increase the time of your saving. It could be for seconds. Right. Outposts deals with a lot of processing in the background, which may affect your gaming performance. But quest That's bugs, annoying. you may encounter them with or without the outposts. So it's a bit multifaceted the way you describe them. But I think to answer your question, that really depends on people. Like. If they like to sandbox and get to higher levels, then once you get to the new game plus, it'll clear all the man out. And if you gained high levels, it carries over. So you have the best of both worlds yeah. with that. And I feel this is a right decision for me when I did the new game plus. But yeah. otherwise, if you're sticking it to the same playthrough, you just have to deal with those performance issues. And mm. that's a disadvantage of having to do farms on the outposts. Yes. So but, I think when it comes to farming and farming these achievements, for me personally, I'm going to try and beat the, all the side quests, like all the, the faction quests and all that, and then I'll do the farming last, personally. I think that's what I'll probably do. What uh, I do feel is that on its own, without the farming, it takes really long for you to get to level 100. I mean, what level are you right now? That's a good point. I'm like level 38, I think. Yeah, because if you beat yeah. the main story, then it would take a bit longer for you to get over 100. And I think it just gets it's a bit long. grindy. Also, there's an it issue is. that vendors don't have enough money and there's no perks that can increase it. So you can like have to do multiple True. loops, sell all this loot, and they do the loop. Like I had to go through like lots of waiting, lots of loops, just to get like, extra money, and it's just so tedious. And I just think yeah, it's one true, of those like reasons that you have to end up relying on exploits to do fast level ups. You get more money, but with Professor getting rid of like invisible, getting rid of the chest glitches, I feel we're turning into yeah. an Enchanted Daggers scenario in like, from like Skyrim, where you did get as much oh, XP God, before yeah. with the Enchanted Daggers. So if they start to like clamp down the exploits instead of doing the game breaking bugs, then we're going to have a problem with it. Yeah, I was gonna say like that reminds me is like um, 
if you've got contraband or whatever, you don't want to land on a planet with contraband. You try and sell it off to the trade authority, who are the only people who buy contraband. You can I can have like a big stack of contraband, and I'm like, oh, I've the the vendors run out of money. I guess I'll just to have a sleep for 24 hours before I can buy, I can sell more stuff to the vendor. Like, as you were like saying, it is annoying that the vendors have a limited amount of money to buy stuff off you because you want to get rid of all the contraband before you go back into space and get caught, basically. So yes. I think that, that could be a frustrating. Yeah, so that basically, is just another frustration. Some of the plans that do have a trade authority, you have to go through contraband scans. So if you have contraband on your ship, you had to go for it every yeah. time. So the best way is to get the shielded cargo and the signal jammer so you can like bypass those contraband scans. It's not like a chance. Yeah. It's just like knowing how like you it is. That if you most likely just go through them, you can instantly go through them more wide. Like yeah. I got like eight pieces of contraband from the Master Crate and it's like, wow, it's cool. And even though the jammer and the shielded cargo, you can slip through it easy enough. But before then, yeah. that, though they've... T- two places you can go to is like you visit a den and you sell it to a trade authority or if you've been doing the crimson fleet you can you can visit the like the key planet and you sell your stuff at the vendors there and these that's are the true. good places yeah. for selling contraband but that's about it which leads to another problem is that if you do steal ships from like pirates or anything like that without attacking any of the good guys most of the time you definitely find the contraband on the ship if you didn't like check through the ship good enough, then you just end up like having like if you go in the ship, you just end up having scanned a contraband. And the best way to avoid the scan is like you take the contraband, put it in the cargo, and it will have a shielded cargo bonus. Otherwise, if you have it in your yeah. inventory, you will definitely get caught out for it. Yes. So it's just there's a ways in which there's some booby traps where you just like Go in the ships and re- and forget there's a concrete band on the ship that's not been stowed away and it may not have any shielded cargo. So that's something to watch out for. Do you have any other complaints before we move on to our uh Oh um, a lot review? more actually because All right, let's try uh, speed run. <laughs> well try and speed run. Well, I think you, you have to be patient with it. And I'm gonna go through them all, right. all the way. Like like right. the companions, I think I can allow your input on this. That uh, companions are becoming more important in Starfield. Companions are yeah. have been part of the game for, um, for since Oblivion. Oblivion is almost you didn't notice there's a companion thing there. Skyrim, you have options for companions and you can marry them, and some of the achievements mm-hmm. do require you to do that. And it feels the same way with Starfield. But it tries to put make them as such a huge feature of it that some missions you are required to take a companion with you and you can't get rid of them until you complete a mission. And also you get like bonuses for the companions, like they know some of the skills there. So if you have them with you, yeah, yeah. then you could get bonuses. I think it's very similar to the companion system in Fallout 4, but it's just a bit more forgiving. Like you raise the infinity easily. But they just took this further where you can assign companions to the outpost, which their skills can help improve with the resources and maintenance, even security. And if you have them on yeah. the ship, it just like boosts the skills of the features of your ship, the like ship. repairs and mm-hmm. weapons there. And I've been experimenting with that. And I think it's like really cool. But then it just kind of ruins the game in some ways because I find them a bit. I have experienced bugs with companions, and I mentioned about the Sanko right. thing where he gets trapped and affects the game, and it's just not great. Yeah. Also, I know there's some like glitches where, like, I went into the ship and Fasco that I got from the beginning mission. When I went into the ship and got my crew, Fasco is just like uh, is caught between both floors, and every time I leave a ship, right. He's still outside, he's not inside. There's also another glitch towards the end of a playthrough. So that I sit down and I get repetitive dialogue from like Sarah or any other crew member. So I just feel that these parts hasn't been well maintained. Mm. And I just feel like they're trying to make this integral to this whole game, but but they haven't actually properly tested it. So I feel the companions and That's the true. outposts are like really buggy. 
Like, if you play Starfield with Sandbox, you'll probably be better off playing on your own, and that's where the fun goes. But if you're focusing on the quest right. lines, you may not be able to encounter lots of bugs because there's some other bugs there that you may experience when you're sandboxing. So I think it just makes yeah. it like more challenging when it comes to like sandboxing. But if you're focusing on just the quest lines, it's fine. But you may even like get some like game breaking bugs too, which I only have like reports there. Like when they did the, like some of the missions, sometimes the person didn't appear and they end up using console commands to complete them. So it's just not that great. Also, right, as okay. I said, Bethesda seems to be more inclined to do the exploits than dealing with the game breaking bugs, which is very questionable. Yeah. But lastly, with this yeah, whole bugs weird. thing, is that there has been crashes and freezes. Like I had a few crashes in like the first like five days of game gameplay, and I had crashes. Right. I had freezes. And one of them happens during the main story where when you get to the point with the main story where you have an interaction with the bed, like if you choose the one option, the screen goes black, but then the game freezes. So the one way to go around that is that you go out to the lodge, you wait on Venus for a while, and then you just like go through this mission or white, and I haven't had that again. So it's just like, right. yeah, it there's definitely bugs in the game, and you may even get them doing yeah. the quest line. But I think it just varies with people's experiences. Like, if you've been playing Starfield without any bugs, that's great. If you had any bugs with it, no. yeah, that's that's definitely like, yeah, it's the kind of things you expect with it. So it just depends on your luck. But it's just something. Yeah, to I've, put been, this I've out been very there. lucky with it. Yeah, I've been very lucky when it comes to glitches. I've not had many. As I said I had the headless characters at one point. And I've the game's frozen on me once, maybe I think, but the, like I've spent like hundreds of hours in this game, and I've not really had any glitches whatsoever. So uh, yeah, it is it is a luck thing or a bad luck thing, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, I've never had any of these really bad glitches that you've had, unfortunately. Oh, like luckily for me, so but yeah, it, it must suck when it happens to you. I must say. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. I had that. Already discussed about the outpost and visiting planets thing, and then can slow the game down. But mm. I've been playing it on PC. Like, if you're on the video card, not too great because it uses AMD technology. So, like the uh, FSAA or some sort. Like, it can't. I don't know. I, I don't know. remember the exact code name. But if you're on the AMD card, game would run fine. But if you're on the PC version, it's like you don't always get the full 60 frames per second, even the most powerful graphics cards. And you have to like rely on the optimized defaults because they haven't optimized the graphics or the game. And you just encounter like frame drops when you play on it. Like you could say that it runs fun on Xbox Series X, but I still had like frame drops and it depends on how much you do with the game. So right now the game's not mm. very optimized. And I feel Bethesda is going to be committed to like trying to improve the optimization for the game. But right now, mm. as it is, it's not optimized enough. And that's a bit of a right. problem there. Also in the game, okay. accessibility settings. Uh, Sorry. No, I was gonna say about the AMD thing, obviously that's a big piece that's a big flaw on the PC version. Playing yes. on the PC. I think the number one mod downloaded at the launch was the the video uh, the like the nvidia version of the game like so to get yeah that was the biggest downloaded mod at launch if i remember correctly so yeah it is a problem on pc for sure i've not as i said i've not really had any of these issues on my xbox version but maybe i've just been lucky so but yeah i could totally understand that being a pain in the ass so yeah, go but, ahead, sorry. But there's one thing you definitely noticed, and even at the beginning of the Space space Skyrim, is that it lacks accessibility settings. And it gives you, like, bigger mm. text and gives you a few options. But it doesn't have colorblind modes, and yeah. it doesn't have any other accessibility uh, things. And I think it's just not very accessible to some gamers. Like, you notice, like, you don't have a brightness slider, even in the starting area? Yes. So you can be able to do the brightness or the HDR, and I f and that's something that Bethesda is looking to bring in a later update. 
Yeah, because I remember the opening ga- the opening bit of the game. Obviously, you were in a mine at the beginning of the game. I couldn't see certain parts of the mine because it was so dark, and I had no light or anything. So I would have loved to have been able to put the brightness up a little bit. So yeah, I get that completely. That is annoying, and for people who are like having uh, issues with like vision and stuff, I w- must be really frustrating. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Also, there's another issue with the game is that the H the UI is underwhelming in the user interface. Also, the user experience. Like, when I started the game, it's just like, it has a high learning curve, but I got used to it. Like, I just, like, mm. couldn't, like, figure out some of the elements there. And it's like, once I get used to it, it's all good. But sometimes the tool tips, like, are not really clearly presented. And also, there's some tricks you don't even realize that have been there. And it's more apparent in, like, shipbuilding yeah. as well. But it's still clunky. It lacks the quality of life features, like... You can eat items when you play in the game. You just have to get in the menu and eat it, and it's a bit of a, a nuisance there. They did say they're going to add that. They did say yes. they were going to add that in a certain patch, but I don't I haven't seen it yet. But that, yeah, that is a thing. I was going to say, um, the, as I said, the first, the number one mod downloaded is DSSL or whatever it is. The second most downloaded mod is the uh, is Starfield UI upgrade or like yeah, what's it called Star the UI. Star UI. That's a really so, good yeah, mod, understand. and I was going to get to that, but like, it just like displays more information, condenses items, and it's very customizable, and it's just like really improves on that thing. But I have to say, it's a improvement on Skyrim. Like, you get the same like push the thumbstick to access menu on the thing as Skyrim. Mm-hmm. You have the same kind of like ex like dinner the items in Skyrim, only it's like more organized and shows more information. And I like mm-hmm. it, but it could have been so much better. Also, you have this like a short transition whenever you go through the menu, which is why there's another mod which cuts out those transitions in Starfield. So you can instantly go into those oh, good. menus and go through it quickly. In fact, there's even more mods that improves the UI and that even like speeds up from how you get to the main menu. And I just feel these mods is what makes the UI better. And I feel this is a bit of a more, and it's not a good sign because if the mods are already improving the game and by doing the UI, then it shows like how, like the UI in the Starfield is better compared to the other Bethesda games. But it's not on par with many a good user interfaces found in other games. And I, f- I haven't checked out Cyberpunk 2077, but it's just like, uh, it's not great. Although I did like okay. really enjoy the lock picking, and that's one of the really good features it with it. And it's I just, love the lock picking, I'm obsessed. This is one <laughs> of the highlights of the game where it's easy to lock pick, like you do the little bit of puzzle with it. I didn't mention this in yeah. like the positives here but it's definitely yeah, like really yeah. hot one one of the huge highlights with the whole games it's just good oh, it's but- so much it's so much fun yeah i agree i got that maxed out it's a lot of fun it's like once you got the hang of it it's a really fun puzzle game to do it's like a little puzzle game in the middle of your uh, rpg it's really good sorry go ahead but yeah it's just ui is not great but it's improving on like Skyrim, for instance. But speaking of which, mm-hmm. there's a Bethesda gameplay loop where you do like a bunch of fetch quests. You had to go to different locations to do missions. Like if you enjoy this sort of thing, as in like start in Skyrim or even Fallout games, and you feel this gameplay is just quite fun, you would definitely enjoy Scar- uh, Starfield. But I think it's always yeah. going to be mixed. Like, if you don't enjoy those, you're not likely to enjoy uh, Starfield, and that's what it is. Like, you had to fast travel or visit different planets in order to do missions, and Fair. and it's just, like, lots of fetch quests in it. Also, they return many of the features, and, and in addition to what I already mentioned, like, they did some of the things dirty, like sneaking. I don't know if the... User interface is a bit more complicated, but I don't think they did sneaking as good as what you get in like Skyrim, no. for instance. Also, yeah. Outposts would have had so much more stuff there compared to like Fallout 4, when it's been watered down and just become a more basic, just like put it on the ship. I think the yeah. biggest thing is that okay. it takes this feature from like uh, No Man's Sky and. Yeah. 
or even elite where you have all those planets and i feel this is like the most ambitious thing and i feel this is what a lot of work is put into it like you have so many planets and therefore there's always bound to be glitches or even like lots of procedural maps and i think it's a bit really spread out so i think it's just like you're not going to get a lot much apart from the procedural maps and trying different combinations of different resources. Also, the further you get to the left of the star map, you're always going to have much stronger enemies and better loot. So I think mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. But then it's just a Bethesda game. And if you like those kind of games, you would like Starfield more. So it's just almost like oh, yeah. a niche in some ways. No, I get that. I was going to say, like, so... Um... Because it's funny because I went from Tears of the Kingdom to this, and they're completely different styles of open world games. Like you're saying, it's it's, it's very true. It's like going from checkpoint to checkpoint to checkpoint to checkpoint to checkpoint, to checkpoint this game, whereas Tears of the Kingdom is like, all right, go, just do whatever you want. <laughs> they don't tell you anything. It's like the two polar extremes of the two options. Um, and I like both. I think they both work. They both have their they both have their pros and their cons. Um, but yeah, I get that. I can, I totally get a lot of the stuff you're saying. Uh, I was also going to say a little bit with that is that we say it's like it's a very Bethesda game. The joke we have, obviously, is that we even named the podcast over it, is it Space Skyrim. But really, I would say it's more like Space Daggerfall. Like, uh, oh, that's there's a lot of procedural generate. Like, Daggerfall, I think it had like 5,000 cities or 5,000 like areas Crazy. in the game or something because it was all procedurally generated. That's kind of the same kind of thing that they do with this. And it's like each area is like segmented off, but you use procedural generation. I've never played Daggerfall, but this is just what I've seen from reviews and stuff. But it's like, so like it's a bit more procedural than those other games and stuff that uh, uh, Bethesda have done, but I still really enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's a really good game. I, I'm really excited. I, I know you have a lot of complaints, but you do, in general, enjoy the game as well. Mm. Uh, I think it's a lot easier to find complaints of it than uh, <laughs> pros. I just, yeah. Um, so was there any other things you wanted to mention before we yes. move on to our final verdicts? I think the common complaints, like the biggest complaint is encumbrance. You mentioned it as one of the big yeah. complaints there. And I think, My big complaint. to me, it's not a, not a huge deal to me, but it's just annoying. And also the people are complaining about the planets being empty, but these are pretty much lands for procedural generation. Um, mm -hmm. But it also relies on fast travel more, that instead of the open world, it relies on like procedural maps and mini hub, mini worlds. But I just yeah. feel this is a good thing because it has a huge canvas and you get to have more places which you can visit. So I think it's, to me, like if you give it like five to 10 years, like, Starfield improves, it has more mods, and that way you can load even more mods into the game compared to like Skyrim, for instance. And that's where you only have one open world, too. So I think, yeah, I think Starfield is the kind of game that if you allow like some time for it to develop, like it doesn't deserve all this hate, but if you allow some time for the, yeah. the all this heat to cool down and you get more mods for it. It's, Starfield will eventually become a much bigger game and has more mods into it, so that would be quite good. I was, I was also going to mention. So people say about the fast travel thing. So like they're like, oh, it's not seamless going from space to to the planet. It's like, oh yeah, it's a cutscene. But really, if you like playing stuff like No Man's Sky, you flying into the Earth's atmosphere, you're loading up the stuff as you're going. So it's essentially a loaded screen anyway, but you're just in control of it. So it's not really much different. You just basically, it's a bit more artistic, a bit more cinematic is really the thing. Like a lot of this is covered up loading screens, essentially. Like the Mass Effect elevator thing, basically, is like that's a loading screen, but it's far, like, but it, you're still in the game. I know. What you I don't mean think by people, that. people, <laughs> I, people are like saying, like, the, a lot of people's complaints are, it's like, it's, you need to go from one cut loaded screen to another cut loaded screen. It's like, that's every game is like that. It's just a lot of people, they haven't done a very good job of covering it up. It's not, it's not like a secret loaded screen. You just like, you just, it's blatant, but 
it's just it's you know every every game has loaded screens like no matter what even if you don't notice them there is always some kind of loading going on in the background even if you don't notice them like first hand so well, i don't understand the complaint on that one really i do have a couple of the points there that fast travel it just depends on their expectations like if they think the Bethesda game yeah. always comes to the open world then they would not they, they would feel fast traveling and um, having to rely on it is just what hampers the game down well yeah. the truth is starfield is very different and it doesn't rely on the open world for it and it relies on procedural maps so so i think they're expecting a bit too much from any Bethesda game well i think i said this i think i said this on space skyrim i don't know if i said it on the podcast or Space skyrim but uh this game is a lot of, a lot of people went into this game thinking oh it's no bad sky uh, or it's like it's elite dangerous blah 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 so this game is actually just more like the outer worlds just bigger it's the like it's a lots of little herb worlds lots of little planets lots of lots of activities to do with each planet but essentially you're just going from one pla- one little herb to herb to herb and if you like the outer worlds you'll love this game it's essentially outer worlds but on steroids it's out of worlds but bigger <laughs> like it's and i don't have a problem with that it's a different style of game but it's like you know it, it's not seamless but it's like the game is so ambitious and so huge i don't i, I think it's a bit a, a bit crazy for people to expect it to be all seamless and go from one to the other without any like loading screens or anything i think that's a bit of a, a too high expectation to be honest personally but that's just me i think the ambition of this game is ridiculously high and it's something it, it does a lot of stuff very well personally well to me but, i uh, think it just like raises a huge risk of this ambition of this whole planet thing and when given the bethesda's yeah. track record of bugs i think it's just going to be like lots of bugs and so far I think it's just like there's still bugs there, and I just this is why I feel that least amount of bugs of any Bethesda game to be like a bit fake because I think there's people are saying like they found more game breaking bugs in the game. Some of them don't, and I just and I also encountered glitches too. So it just seems like it's a huge like it's a huge ambition to do with the multiple planets thing, and apparently. I don't think it's particularly executed executed in some ways, but then it works for some, it doesn't work for some, so it's just fine. Yeah. Also, I was going to mention that No Man's Sky doesn't have any customization with it, whereas Starfield yeah. has added customization as well. However... And it's not... The- they're not the same type of game either. Like, no. like No Man's Sky is kind of a survival game where it's like you're building... I mean, you, know, you build outposts and all this, but that's not the main part of Starfield. The main part of Starfield is storytelling and and dialogue between characters and stuff. And, like, that's the main gameplay. Whereas, like, role-playing, talking to characters and all that, if you want to just explore planets and build outposts and stuff, you probably are better off with No Man's Sky. But if you want an RPG, this like a professor RPG, this is more that. You don't yes. get that kind of stuff in uh, well, No Man's Sky. Well, yeah. actually, if you want a, like, a, a <coughs> fun RPG that has a lot of flexibility, like you have like uh, Fallout New Vegas or Outer Worlds if you're mm. into sci-fi. Mm. If, you, yeah. if you want a game that you see that you just has a you got everything you would expect for the Bethesda game, the Cyberpunk 2077, if you enjoy like ships building and you travel across planets and take out enemies there's faster than light and there's or if you just want to i don't know i think there's many more games that i would go through but there's lots definitely of lots of games that has those more specific experiences as well but starfield it just tries to go for the huge platter and right. and i think this is a huge undertaking for like the fest there also, I was going to mention about I the fast travel great. thing that you said about loading screens with an issue. Well, apparently, if you yeah. do a lot of stuff in Starfield and like land in the similar planets, for instance, it could affect the loading screens too. Whereas if you don't have so much oh, okay. done or you haven't explored much, loading screens could be a bit quicker. So I yeah. think it just depends on how much you did in the game and how much it affects performance. And I just feel it just depends like how far you can go with this whole thing before it starts slowing down your game. And I just feel there's this huge ambition of like exploring other planets 
like it just seems to whether this starts to affect the players enjoyment of this whole game like you can't have yeah. too many outposts without slowing the game down you can't over complicate outposts without slowing the game down and i just feel there's many other areas of the game that might affect it but it's also like the starfield is also like a very enjoyable game as well and it's also very addictive mm -hmm. and i just feel like right now at launch it's just like yeah it it's pretty much what you expect and if you allow it like more years to get into starfield then you might get a much improved game so yeah yeah i i mean i can't wait for the dlc to come out which is obviously we've already paid for the dlc and that's going to be really good when they, like when they've patched the game even more it's going to be really good there's uh, also it makes me also there's also the Todd Howard well, saying that there could be a survival mode for Starfield ooh, and that's nice. coming out for it. It's just like the one you get from Fallout 4, so it should be exciting too. We need, fi we need fish in. Put fish in on the odds we can get high. <laughs> um, what was I was going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, like, it's funny to think that they were going to release this game two years ago. So, like, you know, you've had all these bugs and issues. I haven't, luckily, but imagine how much more buggy it would have been if they released this two years ago. It's kind of bad to think that, the, you know, that, you know, I think it's very polished for what it is. I think it's a very good game. Um, should we move on to our final thoughts? So then, uh, and then we yes. can wrap up the show then. And I'm yeah, going to. A bit long. Well, w there's a. I uh, got the one question for you too, but let's go on okay. to the opinions there. So, without interrupting each other, we're going to say our closing thoughts on Starfield along with the sc score. So, you give the score before you switch over to me. Ready? Okay. So, do you want me to go first? Yes. Okay. Starfield is one of the most ambitious video games I've ever played. It is my favorite Bethesda game ever. I love sci-fi. As I said earlier, the if I people say, "Oh, yeah, this is like the dark Brotherhood from this and all that," but for me, this is all new. This is my Bethesda game. This is my RPG. This is the game I love, and I can see myself playing this for like the next ten years of my life, going back to it and constantly. If they re-release it, I will be replaying it. I absolutely adore this game. Yes, it has some issues like overcumbrance and some bugs and stuff but i've not really had any of those issues i love the characters i love the world i love the setting i love the gameplay and it is one of my favorite games of all time already i that didn't think there'd be any game possible that could outdo tears of the kingdom for my game of the year but this is up there and it possibly might even beat it i'm not 100 percent sure i'm still on the fence with that but this game is absolutely fantastic it has issues but all games do. I think the ambition outweighs the problems. I think the fact that they've tried to do something so ambitious and something so huge, they need to be credited for it. I'm still still discovering stuff hundreds of hours into it, and I'm going to be discovering stuff in hundreds of more hours, I think. And I think this game is an absolute masterpiece, and it is one of my favorite games of all time, and that is why I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I know it's not perfect. I know 10 out of 10 means it's perfect, but for me, it is one of my favorite games ever, and I adore it, and I can't say enough good things about it. I can't wait for the DLC, and I'm definitely getting all the achievements. I can't st stop playing it. <laughs> so it's 10 out of 10 from me. Now over to you, Alice. And let's yes. have your final verdict. Well, I just think, like, uh, I haven't been thinking about Starfield this year, and when this delay, they're like, okay, it's not coming out in 2022. So, but then when it just finally came out, and the thought after seeing the direct, and thought, oh wow, that might be all right. It's got a lot of stuff there. And then oh, when I saw lots of systems there, it's just like really ambitious. It's like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. And but then I still waited for it. I even like tried to get a day off where I get to play all of it. And it's a bit of a steep learning curve, which I could have stayed in to play it all, but I ended up spending over 100 hours on it, which one of the times where I actually did that was with Animal Crossing New Horizons and even Cenobite Chronicles. And I just feel Starfield is pretty much right there, and it's got a bunch of things that you just feel like, yeah, it's so good. Which is what... But then... When it comes to the few scores, it's just like seeing sevens, seeing eights, and seeing sixes, and it's like, yeah, it 
it's pretty disappointing. I know it feels like a knee-jerk reaction, but I just thought they would be getting like high enough scores, so it's a bit of a shame. But I can honestly say that after playing this game for so long, I just feel like the 7 out of 10 is just feels more justified for this whole game. And I'm just like, yeah, I think it's just making sense here. So it just leaves here that, yep, um, I know I've been like banging about the glitches and at the moment, Starfield is pretty much like, at the moment, if you buy it right now, expect to have glitches, expect to have issues with it, because if you're afraid of bugs, then it's best if you wait a few years, like five years, 10 years, or even wait for the special edition to come out. And it's just like, yep, uh, the game will be better. And then this is the same with Cyberpunk 2077 because it has a stupendous amount of bugs and became a meme for the game that has so many bugs in it. It's crazy. But now you have this 2.0 update for it, which now treats it like an ultimate game and you don't have any issues with it. And I thought, yeah, that's awesome. And I just feel the same way with Starfield that if you play Starfield now, it's definitely on the bleeding edge. So if you want the least stable version of it, you just kind of have to wait longer, especially for it to drop down in price on the sale. And I feel this is where most people will get the best experience out of it once it has enough updates. But then again, I caved in, farmed, and I met, I did a lot of things that kind of made the game worse for me. And I deserve the new game plus and lose all that stuff. And that's when I have to focus on that, which I didn't have enough time to focus on it. Because if you focus on only on quests, make a beeline for it, and you don't do any a lot of silly things with it, chances are you may enjoy this game a lot, and you may enjoy the game. But so far, it's a bit of a marmite where some people get bugs and ruins the game. Some people play the game and don't encounter any issues. And you may even enjoy the game too. So therefore, I think some parts of it in Starfield, I feel the questing, shipbuilding, and even like doing combat is what really makes the game. But I feel that they may have been over ambitious with the outposts. They tried to put the companions as the center of the game, which they do get really buggy. And also, the sandbox scene isn't quite there yet, and I think there's some issues with it. So I think for now, like if you're gonna play Starfield just to get the story, which um, I have to admit, some parts of the story is really enjoyable. I like the ending with it, and the main story is like really fantastic. And, and I just feel people are being, might have been expecting too much when they reviewed the game and thought they would be expecting a much bigger experience. And that's only because like Starfield given some extra time for it to be polished out. And yeah, it's just still hasn't got there yet. Still feels like a beta to some, but for some others, it's like a yeah. masterpiece and I respect them for that. So I think with all this stuff there and something that you always sink lots of hours into it, I think it's just really good. Whereas other games at the moment do provide much better uh, better experiences like No Man's Sky launched with some issues there, still great. Cyberpunk 2077 still had issues, but it's still great. And those are the kind of games you should be focusing on. Like, if I were to tell you anything to do in this, like now, and whether you're thinking you should get Starfield, Cyberpunk 2077 is the game to go while you wait for the S Starfield to uh, like have the issues blown over. But apart from that, Exploits is what makes the game, and it just makes it really fantastic. And you can cheese it as much as you can, which is what really mm. makes the Bethesda game, and it's just, like, really fantastic. But if a Bethesda starts to clamp down the exploits above, like, game-breaking exploits, then it kind of, like, hampers the fun of the game, because, because without the exploits, and if they try to make it clean as possible, then you end up having a very grindy game. Also... I just feel they went a bit too far with the planets 
it's got so many planets and you have to deal with the procedural maps and you may start to see repetitive structures, which doesn't actually bother me, but I think it just depends. No. Like if you want a lot of flexibility and you don't like the Bethesda games loops, like if you like those kind of features, you may enjoy it the most, otherwise not. So, so I think as a benefit of a doubt, trying to be as fair as possible. And I feel that I'm going to give this game a huge chance that if it improves, it could become like a really fun game. And I think, I mean, it's going to be treated the same way as Skyrim, that if you give it some more time, it gets better throughout time. But why right now? It's just like, you don't really need to buy it straight away. So I'm going to have to say like for now, it's an eight out of 10 for me. So okay, I'm not giving it okay. a nine out of ten. I'm not giving it a ten out of ten because it's not game of the year no. material. Nine out of ten Ooh. is like kind of stretching Ooh. it and trusting that it's going to be fantastic. Could be different, but from what I experience, it's eight out of ten for me. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I, I was worried for a second you were going to give me like a four or something. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> not like, giving it a four. <laughs> you, uh, but no, I'll, okay. That's disappointing because I really enjoyed it. I, I didn't think you had that many glitches, but I, I guess you just had a, a bit of a shittier experience, which is a shame because I've not had any of these bugs really, which is a shame. Uh, but it's a good thing for this with you because you have a really positive experience with it. Mine's a bit oh, more yeah. negative experience, which I might be a bit biased after like uh, trusting the refuse too much, but to be honest. Like if I didn't had if it wasn't for these issues with the game, then yeah. then this game would have been a much higher score. But now it's just like seen seen more convincing, and I just felt so close to giving it a seven. But at least eight is more of a compromise, and I feel it's just fair oh. for this whole game. Wow. Okay. Shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Stunned. Ah. Oh my heart <laughs> uh I, I don't know it's like for me person i mean we, obviously we, it's a, the review scores are subjective right i mean i get that but i think for me just out of even just you just the ambition of this game i feel like it deserves to at least have a seven no matter like just and like that should be the bare minimum just purely down to the ambition of this game and like how much they've tried to do and like how much they've achieved I get that it's not perfect. I adore it. It's my. It's. I don't know if it's my game of the year. I think Zelda's probably still my game of the year, but it's up there. It's one. It's between those two. They're one, they're one and two. And um, that's what makes me more um, interested to hear your game of the year. Was it Tears of the Kingdom? I can't decide. Starfield. I can't decide. Ooh, that's <laughs> going to so be different. exciting towards it, the end of the year. <laughs> it, is, it is the definition of picking apples and oranges because they are totally different games. You can't really compare the two. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I mean, okay. I mean, I was expecting it might have been a bit. I thought you were going to give it a nine or a ten, to be honest. But you know, <laughs> yeah, that's how you feel. Because the amount of time you've spent on it, and you really seem to enjoy it most of the time. But I yeah. guess you've had these issues have kind of dragged it down for you, which is a shame. It's a real shame. Um, no, that's fine. So that means that our review score for uh, Starfield is a 9 out of 10 from Xbox oh, yeah. The Box, which I think is a fair score. Uh, I, I said, as I said myself, it's not perfect. I just didn't, I could look over the floors. I don't have, and I didn't have as many bugs as you. So maybe it, maybe if I had a bit more of a buggy experience, maybe I would have docked some points as well. Yes. But, no, I think that's fair. Nine out of ten is a fair score. I think we give. I, that was the thing coming into this review today is that I was I was like I give too many games ten out of ten. I think I'm too generous for my ten out of ten. So I should only give it to until, one or two games. But that's until you like experience the safe bug in like WWE 2018, and you made the rant video yeah. about it too. And that's introduced I've this meme of your creepy face there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so this year alone, I've given Metro Prime Remastered a 10 out of 10. I gave Zelda 10 out of 10. This a 10 out of 10. I gave Hi-Fi Rush a 9. And Hi-Fi Rush is amazing. And that's probably your game of the year, I imagine, right? Hmm, uh, last year, I gave Elder Ring 10 out of 10. 
And I think I gave Vampire Survivors a 10 out of 10, or I might give it a 9 out of 10. But I think I'm being a bit too generous. So I gotta figure, I gotta be a bit more, uh, gen- less generous with my 10 out of 10s. But I am still giving it a 10 out of 10 because I updated my top 100 games of all time and it got into my number eight slot, which doesn't sound very high, but my eighth favorite game of all time is actually quite impressive. <laughs> this leads me. Kingdoms number one is the problem. <laughs> this leads me to. One of the two questions of the week, and I think we're going to wrap this up with these. So, two questions, bumper episode, especially, it's going to be the longest episode we did without the PlayStation guys. Yeah, they talk too much. (laughs) Two hours and ten minutes right now. So, um, first question is that there's reports of people losing saves or cannot save their games in Starfield. And there's Ooh. and there's a chance that it could happen to anybody. Like I thought one of those times, or I thought I lost my saves and I backed them up on my PC, and yeah, it's all right. Maybe I'm worrying too much. But this leads to the question: Is that if you've been playing Starfield and one day something happened and it causes you to either lose your saves or you load up a save and it crashes, because that's what happened to people. If that happened yeah. to you. Would you be still giving Starfield a 10 out of 10? Uh, hmm. I mean, I haven't had that issue, so it's very difficult to judge, right? Maybe I would be pissed off and I would give it a, like, oh, this is a 4 out of 10, broken. Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. I've not had any of these issues. Uh, I, when they said that this is the least buggy Bethesda game at launch... I kind of agree with it from my personal experience. I've not had any of these glitches. Um, but if I did have a glitch that was like game breaking, save breaking, made me have to start over after 400 odd hours of gaming or whatever I've done on this thing, yeah, that would, that would really upset me. And it'd probably stop, I'd probably stop playing it for a, and maybe I'd go back to it at a later date, but that would probably kill the game for me. So. Yeah, maybe maybe I would give it a nine or an eight or a seven or I don't know. To be honest, I'd have to, it's one of those things I won't know until it actually happens, and I'm hoping it never will happen. Fingers crossed, it'll never happen. <laughs> I don't know. It's a hard it's a hard thing to judge. Um, uh, I've loved this experience so far. Uh, even if I stopped playing it today and never played it again, it would still be a ten out of ten. So I don't know. But to I me, so. like it's not going to be as much of a shock. It's just going to be like breaks my heart. But it's not something yeah. that would be giving it like four or twos out of ten because this happened to me. Like, um, no. I'm anticipating that it could happen to me. It may not happen at all. But if it did happen to me and I cannot, and I have to start the game back again because it would be bad because I don't think New Game Plus refreshes it and that's fine. Uh, or I just wanted to get all those achievements from the main story and then use different characters to get the other quest lines. And I did that, and that's good. So then, yeah. like, if I ever, like, lost the saves and I like, can't access them again, then it just kind of, like, puts a cherry on top of it and feel like, eh, I'll probably, like, give it five, six. Six oh. will be, like, the maximum for it. But because I haven't been dealing with these, it's just all fine. But there's been more what? apparent problems with it, which I didn't have any issues with the saves or even. But there's a, only like one of the issues with the crest, and that would have prevented me from playing. But I got around it, prevented it, yeah. and it went on as normal. So yeah, there's been near misses. <laughs> this could have happened to me, especially for the dead ends of it too. I was going to. What I was going uh, to say as well is that. If I did lose my save file today, which I hope touch wood, please don't happen. Please don't. No. Ah. Don't. If I did lose my save file, <laughs> I would. I, I was thinking about it already. The the DLC is going to be coming out next year, right? We think we've already paid for the DLC. I was thinking. I, I was saying earlier about Cyberpunk. When the DLC comes out, I was thinking I might start a new game for the DLC anyway. And that would probably be what I would be doing. I'd probably start a new game to play the DLC. It depends how big the DLC is, I suppose. But. <laughs> If I lost my save file, I would be like, oh, well, I'll just play it. When the DLC comes out, I'll play it with a new... I'll do a new save file and uh, do this, do the new DLC with that. That's what I was thinking. Or maybe run a new character or something. Thank you for listening to the X Monster Box podcast. 
follow us at xmarksbox on Twitter or xmarksthebox on YouTube and follow us on all audio podcast services. Thanks for listening.